Hi, I'm Dr. Rod Shaw of Math Plus Academy and I'm back with another math treat. This one is a simple one. You pick a number and you follow these rules right here. If the number is even, you take your number and you break it in half. If the number you started with is odd, then you triple it and add one. And then you just repeat until something interesting happens. So let's, let's do one example so you can make sense of what I'm trying to say. Imagine we start with the number five. Well, five is odd, so I'm going to triple it and add one. That's going to bring me to 16. 16 is even, so I'm going to take half or divide by two. That gives me eight. Eight's even. I divide by two again. That's four. Four is even, leading me to two. Two's even, leading me to one. Now, I'll pause here because it gets kind of boring at this point in a way, because if I follow the rules, one, if you triple it and add one, gets you four, which just takes you back to here which then gives you two, and then one, and back to four. So you kind of end up in this loop at the end, this four, two, one loop. Let's try another number and see what happens. How about six? Well, six is even, so this time I will take half to start. Three's odd, I triple it, which is nine, and add one, that's 10. Ten's even, that brings me to five. Five is odd, up to 16. Sixteen's even, I'm at eight. Eight's even, four, two, one. Back into that four, two, one loop again. Now, you might be wondering, like, does it always end in the four, two, one loop? Is there a way to avoid the four, two, one? So I want you to kind of think about, like, can you avoid this loop? Or do you always end up here? Also, if you look at this, you might notice a few things. One thing you might notice is I went six, three, 10, five. Now five is a number that I did already. And then it, of course, because it has to, does the same thing. 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So once we see a number that we've already figured out, we know it's going to happen. That could make it easier for you to figure out, am I always going to get to that 4, 2, 1 loop or not? So that's something to think about. Another thing to think about is why these rules? Why these two rules? And I think it's interesting to note that if the number is odd, you're tripling it and adding one. So you're always making odd numbers bigger. And you're always making even numbers smaller. So in a way, these two rules kind of balance each other out. So you could imagine maybe there's some numbers you could pick where you can sort of bounce around and avoid the 4, 2, 1 loop somehow. So I want you to see if you can maybe find numbers like that. Now, I want to show you a different example just so you can see another example of what could happen. We're going to change the rules and investigate a slightly different thing. So now imagine that I change the rule. Instead of triple and add one, I'll make it triple and subtract one. And we'll see what happens. So now let me start with five again. Now when I triple it and subtract one, I get 14. 14 is even, so that becomes seven. 7 is odd, so I triple and subtract 1. That's 20. 20 is even, which gives me 10. 10 is even, which gives me 5. Oh, look. Right back to there. 5 is odd. That's going to give me 14. 14 is even, 7. And this is a loop. In fact, maybe I'll just eliminate that and draw the loop like this, so that we don't have the five repeated. It's the same five. So this is something, this little loop here is kind of interesting. It, dev it never hits one. And that happens when I do the subtracting one over there after I triple odd numbers. So you might look for something like this with the triple plus one rule that we started with. See if you can find something like that. Now I will say mathematicians have been studying this for a very long time and that they do not have all the answers to the break it in half, triple it plus one problem. Uh, and so you may end up discovering things that no one has ever discovered with this problem. And if you get a little bit bored with the having and tripling plus one, make your own rules and see what happens. You might discover some really cool stuff. And um, another question you might ask is for the tripling plus one, you could ask, you know, what is the longest string I can make before I get to four, two, one? Like, how do. Are there some numbers that generate really long patterns? Are there some numbers that get to 421 really quickly? All interesting questions for you to explore. 
I'm really curious to see what you do. And as always with these math treats, just have fun playing around with math.